Welcome to the Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by Play Picks and the Lines coming to you from the West Coast. Josh Lander joined by my guy Nate Weitzer on the East Coast. And we are looking at a pretty weird Wednesday night slate here in the NBA tonight. On this one, we're going to be running into those Celtics hosting the Cleveland Cavaliers. A couple players missing, obviously, from those games and a few others. Make sure you are liked and subscribed to that page as we got a couple other videos up for you today as we try to navigate this NBA landscape that is currently being riddled by COVID, as we all know. Uh, make sure you do check out Nate's great article up on playpicks.com as well with some of those best bets and uh, player props for you. And as always, if you do still need a FanDuel or DraftKings account, head to fdpicks.com or dkpicks.com and find those listings in your area, such as what we got with those Celtics and Cavs tonight. Nate, let's get into it. Yeah, the Celtics are five and a half point favorites with the Cavs missing almost all of their key players, I guess. I mean, at least their key, key defenders. No Evan Mobley, Jared Allen, Isaac Okoro, as lo- along with uh Lamar Stevens and Dylan Windler, who are more uh, ancillary players. But the Celtics are also missing some defenders in terms of Al Horford, Josh Richardson, and Grant Williams, all due to protocol here. Um, But the C's a little bit more whole at this point, for sure. The total opened near 206 and has been bet up to 214. So that is an exploitable number in either direction, depending on how you feel about that. Uh, We're going to circle back to that game. There are five other games on this Wednesday slate. Pretty small slate here two days out from Christmas Eve. We got Magic plus eight at the Hawks, who have their top guys in protocol. Raptors plus 10 at the Bulls, despite a few guys out on both sides there. Rockets are plus 10 at the Bucks. No Giannis, but we will break down what we think about that game in a separate video. Nuggets minus six at the Thunder. And the Clippers, who just got Paul George back, are minus five at the Kings. Looking at the Celtics tonight, um, I mean, they, if they can't handle business in this game, I don't know if I will ever trust this team. Um, the, the Cavs <laughs> have some really notable splits. When they have Mobley and Allen on the floor together, they're, may, they're the best defensive team in the league. They might be the best defensive team in the last decade in terms of guarding the rim. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And they're also second in three point defense over their last four games. You know, that's with Mobley missing a couple. Allen, this will be Allen's first game out uh, due to protocols. They still beat the Bucks shorthanded, you know, with him in there. Uh, within three games without Allen, all losses, they're only averaging 93 points per game, and their defensive rating shoots up from about 102 to 111. So that's that's notable on defense. And with Mobley, they're two and without Mobley, they're two and four. They're actually averaging more points per game, 109. But their defensive rating is also up. So Mobley being out might indicate over. uh, Allen might indicate under or Cavs under. So I'm really thinking about the Celtics scoring more here in this situation that we, you know, the Cavs defense still only giving up 94 points per game during their last four wins, despite missing some of these guys. But that's a lot of circumstance. The Bucks rested their entire team on a back-to-back. The Rockets rested their best players um, in that previous game, scored like 73 points. And the Heat, which have been down their best offensive players, were in that one of those four games as well. Boston, since getting Jalen Brown back, has been a quite a competent offensive team. And... He's actually has 28 plus and three straight against the Cavs. He, but you look at their home home games and they've totaled home games, not against the 76ers. Let's preface that because those uh-huh. are just an anomaly altogether. <laughs> their last four home games have averaged 221 and a half points per game. Uh, <clears throat> so, I mean, where it opened, I definitely loved the over. I think now you would have to tease it back down along with Celtics minus two which I have no problem with. I, I think the Celtics should absolutely win this game and I would look at parlaying it, but I, I think you can also take the Celtics over their team total of one Oh nine, hoping that the Cavs just with so many guys out are just going to be a disaster defensively. I mean, you think about, they have to play Ricky Rubio, Laurie Markkinen and Kevin Love at the same time. And how's that going to work defensively against Tatum and Brown who are both, you know, cooking right now. You got to think the Celtics will get some points, but I'm a little scared about how the Cavs might fail to score. So I would probably lean towards Celtics total and and just look at the Celtics spread covering uh, and maybe teasing them down to make it easier for them to cover. 
Yeah, I would consider that. I don't know. I'm I'm a little bit hesitant to go over, especially once you get that high, um, you know, where it's at right now. Uh, rising, what did we say, eight points in that total, nine, nine and a half points from that 205 start all the way up to 214 and a half right now. It seems like everybody's on the same uh, trajectory as what you're talking about here, Nate, which is, um, you know, get basically with all these stars out and, and, and those two monsters for Cleveland out and Jared Allen and Evan Mobley, um, that this is, you know, a much worse defensive team and that there should be able to be score points scored. I'm kind of zagging a little bit on that just because of the fact that I think, you know, some of the, the and it's it's tough. Defense defense is obviously hard, harder than offense, in my opinion, to get those individual stats and understand how effective somebody is on the defensive end. Rubio actually has a really good defensive rating in his last three. It's under 100. Um, he's been a really good defender for them this year. The Kevin Love thing does make you a little bit more nervous, but even he's got a pretty good defensive rating in their last three. It's not a great sample size, obviously, because of the amount of game, but it, it's it's also, you know, the fact that they played, you know, a, a Bucks team without both uh, Middleton and oh, I'm sorry, they didn't have anybody in that game that did the Bucks when they beat them last game. They had all three of their big three out. Uh, then they beat the Rockets before that and a Heat team that's also without, you know, the entirety of their starters outside of Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero. Um, and, and Kyle Lowry played in that game as well. But the, the Cavs did have a couple other guys for that Heat game. It's it's the fact that they've been without a couple of guys. You know, they haven't had Mobley in three games. They had Allen out uh, already for one of the uh, for their last game. It's it's. it's it's enough of a, a, a sort of sample size to go. These guys are playing bad teams without offensive players. Uh, so that's why I think they were able to do better on defense in the last three and play above their pay grade. I think in this one, you've got Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum coming back. While their offense has been enough to get some some nice, uh, a few victories in their last bunch of games, um, you know, it's a little bit different, like you said, outside of, uh, of that uh, Philadelphia 76ers game there. Um, they've been able to put up some points, including dropping 107 on the Warriors, depending on how you feel about that. It, it, it's as of late to me, it seems like they are still actually winning with a bit more defense has Boston. Um, I know Jalen Brown comes back that it seems to affect, um, what, you know, what, uh, Jason Tatum's able to do. Um, uh, but I, you know, like you said, in their last four home games, um, with, you know, Jalen Brown there has, has not necessarily affected what their offense has done as they've put up at least 218, uh, in those four, you know, averaging 221. So I think, you know, at home against the Cavs, Cavs team, you feel like you said, you feel really good about the Celtics team total. It's, it, I think the Cavs are going to be okay on defense. I don't think they'll be able to stop the the Celtics to get their team total. But it's more about whether or not they're going to be able to score tonight. Uh, to me as well, that I think Boston's going to be able to handle that. Um, and and that that's why you know the total I'm leaving alone. The Cavs total, or excuse me, the the, the Celtics total. I feel good about that over. Um, everything else to me is a bit of you know. I think we're going to see what we what we know we're going to get from the stars on the Celtics. We're going to get some offense from them. What I don't know is how many points the, the Cavs are going to score tonight. I would lean, to be honest, uh, a bit under with them, but I think this is all just leading to saying take the Celtics, take the points um, and, and know that, you know, if you've got if you, when you've got Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum versus not having um, your two best, you know, down low and one probably your best perimeter uh, wing player in Evan Mobley as well, um, you're going to have trouble scoring tonight, and that's why I don't think they'll be able to hang with the C's uh, in that spread. Yeah, I mean, defensive rating is a team stat, you know, first of right. all. So if those guys have good ratings, it might be because they, even if they let their defender go by, there's two elite rim protectors behind them. And I think that the, the, their ability to limit the three-point line stems from that to a degree because they, they don't have to worry about the blow by as well. But Boston's not a team that's leaning on the three really at all. Uh, they're actually just scoring <clears> – <throat> 34% of their points off threes this season, and, and that dipped to 20% in their last game. They really attacked the basket against the Sixers, and Embiid got 31 field goals inside the arc. Uh, so I think that they will be able to win these physical matchups with Tatum and Brown, you know, matching up against Markinen and, and Love, guys who are, are just not very fleet of foot. Um, I think that they might be able to limit Darius Garland, who's now the de facto top option to score and mm -hmm. is not always in that comfortable in that role. So I, th I think the Celtics win, you know, they've, they've won eight of their last nine at home against Cleveland. They've been hot at home lately, uh, as, especially on offense, as I mentioned, those totals, uh, the, their last four with Jalen, they're the 10th best offensive team, then seventh best rebounding team which is very key against Cleveland. Uh, so, yeah, again, looking for them to cover. And, uh, yeah, I don't really know how to feel about the total at this point, but I think if yeah. you want to tease it down and take the over at that point, then then you could get the Celtics at some better better odds. Yeah, you could. I, I think you, you keep the juice on your Celtics bet, to be honest. I'm not scared of those five and a half points at home. Um, that's where I, I would, you know, 
make my favorite bet in this game for sure. I think another interesting one, I know uh, we're going to have a player props video up today. Uh, I know, Nate, you might be talking about some Darius Garland stuff in there. As you mentioned, he'll be the, the primary, the focal point on offense. Um, I think you can also, you know, you talked about those rebounds and what Boston's been doing, um, which is important rebound against Cleveland, who won't have their best two rebounders in the game. I think that leaves some some opportunity open for uh, Robert Williams um, to come in and get some boards. He's been averaging about 10 boards in his last four games. Um, so his prop tonight for those rebounds is that eight and a half. I would consider that. It's only minus 134. Um, so if you wanted to add a little bit more to it, you might take his points and rebounds um, and get that at about 19 and a half, which gets you even money. You are banking on him to get, uh, you know, about 10 or 11 points tonight. But I think that's also pretty feasible. He's averaging 11 in those last four as well. So I think, you know, with his his props right now at 19 and a half boards and rebounds, I would feel pretty good about that with Robert Williams. I'd feel better about that eight and a half board prop, uh, just not quite as much juice. But, you know, look, we're trying to make money here. It doesn't matter how much if we can make what we make, uh, avoid losing. So those eight and a half boards is where I'd stick, even though you get a little bit less juice on it uh, and feel good about those rebounding stats for the C's that you pointed out. But that is all the time we have for this one. Nate, make sure you guys are liked and subscribed. So you can check out those other couple of videos, including that player props video we love to bring you each and every day. And until we see you next, happy betting.